Using weather as a weapon, American scientists fear the country's intelligence service might be looking for ways to control the climate. We don't know if it's possible to create a cloud in the stratosphere or to brighten clouds out over the ocean, the two ideas that people are looking at, but be that difficult, we don't know. Uh, I don't know what motivates the CIA, I guess they want to protect the United States, but uh, we don't, can't think of any way that you could control the climate of one part of the world without controlling the whole, the whole world. Uh, putting clouds in the stratosphere would have a global effect, not a local effect, and so, uh, it's hard to think of a way it could actually be weaponized, but maybe they want to think about that. I don't know. Geoengineering is weather modification on a global scale. Many refer to this as chemtrails. The dispute as to whether or not these programs are going on is really a moot point. We have more than enough data. We have actual footage. As you're seeing now to show that these tankers are indeed spraying at altitude, the materials we see showing up in the ground are the exact materials named in numerous geoengineering patents, as many as 150 patents. So at this point, the, the notion that these programs are not going on is, is simply uh, denial. Skies like this, many have grown to think are natural, but they're anything but. And we've seen this for so long now, and it's been ramped up at, at such a steady pace that people have simply become used to skies like this. Anybody who thinks grid patterns like this are natural should recheck their reality. This is anything but natural. We, we seldom see blue skies anymore. Skies like this have all too often become the norm. Unfortunately, most people don't even look up. I think at times you could start the sky on fire, nobody would notice. It's exactly what geoengineering patents call for, solar obscuration to block the sun with toxic metal particulates. And unfortunately with geoengineers, they don't seem to take the consequences into account. They're, yeah, the planet is like a giant physics lab for them, and they, they seem to not be able to look outside that bubble. These are this is a halos around the sun. We see often as the atmosphere is filled with particulates, it's important to understand just because you don't see trails from horizon to horizon does not mean you're not breathing particulates. We seldom see blue skies anymore. They're, they're a, a uh, silvery white color, especially in the mornings or the afternoons. If you look to the east or to the west and you block the sun with something, you can see the air is very silvery white. This is indicative of an atmosphere saturated with particulates. These particulates create drought. This is a very known and not disputed effect of geoengineering. As you saturate the atmosphere with particulates, you diminish rain. Need, people need to get this through their head. This is not about seeding to increase rain. This is about creating artificial clouds which reduces rain. When you block the sun, you block evaporation. You block light photons which uh, diminishes uh, the, the ability for the sun to knock molecules loose and create evac evaporation. So, what we get is protracted drought in some areas and deluge in others, exactly what we have in the continental U.S. right now. Putting the wrench on planet Earth, this is the epitome of human insanity, to think that they could alter and control these very complex natural systems is insanity of the first order. Weather as a force multiplier, a term I mentioned a minute ago, owning the weather in 2025. This is a stated U.S. military objective, to own the weather in 2025, and I do not mean to imply that the U.S. military is the only player in this game. We have China and Russia on the other end of the fence, and at this point, it's a tug of war with the atmosphere, and the American public appears to be one of the victims in, in this uh, equation, and it appears that there are other internal objectives against the American people to control food supplies, control water supplies, control water rights, so forth. Global warming and global dimming. Global dimming is something people should be familiar with as well. As of the latest reports, 22% of the sun's direct rays no longer reach the surface of the planet. They're being blocked. The planet is literally encased in a cocoon of toxic metals. Yes, pollution is a part of this problem, but we believe a small part in comparison to the geoengineering, which is horrific, one of which is vitamin D deficiency, of which 98% of the U.S. population is now deficient in vitamin D. The host of diseases and ailments that ensue from that is horrific, not to mention the fact that we are breathing these particulates. So photosynthesis for plants, another issue. Uh, you, you can't block the source of life on planet Earth without consequence. Scientists seek to legitimize geoengineering while acknowledging its catastrophic effects. Again, the scientists, and, and many of which I know, are little concerned with the consequences of their experiments. They're just, uh, they look at the planet as a giant physics lab for them to carry out their little operations. Obama. Obama's geoengineering program, Poison from the Sky. Obama's science advisor, John Holdren, strong advocate for these programs. Uh, they, the Obama administration, in fact, since he has taken office, these programs have been ramped up yet again. They go back a long way, but they're going for broke now. It appears that they're doubling down on the damage they've already done. 
It's like Corexit in the Gulf of Mexico. What did they do? Did they try to acknowledge the mess in the Gulf of Mexico, the oil spill? No, they tried to hide it with a chemical disbursement called Corexit, which by some reports made the toxicity in that region 52 times greater, but they don't care. The goal is to hide the damage they've done, hide the crimes already committed. What are we dealing with? So many people ask this question, why would they do this? If they're doing it to themselves, why would they do it? First and foremost, we're not dealing with sanity. Jack Nicholson puts a good face on that, I think. And uh, we can look back and see that anybody who would detonate 1,800 nuclear bombs on planet Earth, which contaminated all life forms on Earth, is not, is not sane in any way, shape, or form. And the definition of clinical insanity, uh, and, and we are talking about 4% of the population, by the way, that's psychopathic. They have no consciousness of the comprehension, or, or no comprehension as to the consequences of their actions, even to themselves. So that, that's something that must be considered. Has any such testing gone on that we know about? Absolutely. Every day there's more data coming out about not other governments alone, but our government testing on its own people, its own soldiers. And, and again, our military is full of very, very dedicated, honorable people, full of them. But there are scientists and there are some in power that use such dedicated and honorable people as, as pawns in this equation. People who use an excuse that, well, this can't be happening because they wouldn't do it to themselves, that excuse doesn't hold water. Weather warfare. This is going on right now. We appear to have China and Russia on one side of the fence, the NATO countries on the other. The atmosphere has become a battlefield, a very uh, covert battlefield with all life on Earth at stake. Mechanics, airline executives, and doctors talk about Project Cloverleaf. Many ask, are there just military tankers in these programs, or is there commercial aircraft? In fact, with GPS tracking, commercial aircraft have been identified from the ground, leaving particulate trails. Um, and Project Cloverleaf appears to be the outline for this. It makes sense. It's a way of uh, artificially stimulating the economy, keeping non-profitable airlines in the air and flying. One in three seniors in the U.S. dies with Alzheimer's and or dementia. Doesn't mean dies from it, but dies with it. There's no question that all of us have had our uh, neurological system affected. We're all breathing this stuff. It's inside all our systems. So uh, these are staggering statistics, one in three with Alzheimer's and or dementia. Autism. Autism has increased 10,000% since 1975, one in 50 children now has autism, also related to aluminum. Synergistic effects of environmental and heavy metals. These metals are toxic in and of themselves. When you combine them, they become much more lethal. We've been given studies recently that indicate when mercury and aluminum are combined, toxicity increases as much as 10,000%. Bad equation. Let's add to the equation HARP, High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. This is a facility in Alaska. We believe there's 18 such facilities around the globe now. As the ionosphere is, is hit with these particles, as they ionize the whole atmosphere, make it more conductive, these signals can actually manipulate the jet stream. The data is quite clear on that. They, they cause a bulge in the atmosphere by heating it to tremendous temperatures, and that manipulates the jet stream. We believe, in fact, we are seeing huge jet stream manipulation. It's part of the reason why California is frying right now. As our bodies become more conductive from these particulates and we're exposed to more and more of these signals, and especially the signal from HARP, which we see, by the way, the, the signature clouds above our area a lot. HARP helps build the high pressure up like we've had over us again and again and again. These particles dry the air out. If anybody wonders why there's no dew in the morning, you almost never see dew. We have single digit humidity because these particles absorb and accrete all available moisture. They virtually suck it right out of the atmosphere and out of the foliage. These Facilities, these ionosphere heaters, are, are a radical effect in, in the weather we, we, patterns we see happening of late. Unprecedented jet stream movements, and we, we see this almost all the time now, in the lower 48 especially. The, and, and this appears to be connected to, for example, what they might be trying to do in the Arctic could be affecting us horrifically here, because the jet stream as it moves across us, it's part of that long-term manipulation that I believe right now this is why we're frying at this point, because there are some very profound things happening in the Arctic and we appear to be one of the reasons that gets thrown under the bus for, their, for the manipulation of things they're trying to do to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish in the Arctic. So again, this is a very complex equation. And when you affect something upstream, it affects everything downstream. Now, their latest proposal, as the experiment gets worse and worse, as they play weather whack-a-mole, they're now, you, we believe they're already at this program, to use the ionosphere heaters to nuke the atmosphere in a desperate attempt to try to degrade the methane that is already one of the consequences of the programs they've already been at for 60 years. So the, the equation just gets worse and worse. As they saturate the atmosphere with these particulates, it causes ozone damage. The science is extremely clear on that. Many have felt how hot the sun feels on their face. 
if you drive through parking lots in Costco, Walmart, or around Reading, you'll see the south-southwest sides of the trees literally burnt off. This is not natural. And this ozone hole is expanding. They're trying desperately to hide it. Recent changes to Gulfstream causing widespread gas hydrate destabilization. Arctic methane emergency group. Planetary catastrophe is inevitable. Although they are correct that the methane is a, a global game-changing event and a planetary catastrophe, what do these guys propose? That we geoengineer. As if it hasn't been going on for 60 years already. Now, either these people live in a hole or they're lying their butts off. So, if this is an attempt to legitimize geoengineering, we don't know for other reasons or aspects, but we know enough about geoengineering to know at this point it is a cure, quote, cure that is far worse than the, than the disease. The planet has not been allowed to respond. Need to understand this is not about Al Gore, it's not about carbon credits. I do not like Al Gore. Uh, or as carbon credit scams. But the bottom line is geoengineering has decimated our planet's climate. As the ice disappears, that heats the Arctic Ocean, that releases more methane, more heating, very vicious downward cycle. Uh, White House trying desperately to hide this at this point. I don't think they can hide it much longer. If the planet's not allowed to respond on its own, they are literally blocking the rain, especially from Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. They are blanket spraying the Eastern Pacific. We have the satellite photos to prove it. That shuts off the hydrological cycle. We fry. So uh, again, these guys are they're like kids in a sandbox. They're like crazy kids in a sandbox that just want to conduct their experiments till there's nothing left. As methane releases from the seafloor, it aerates the water like a bottle of champagne. Ships have no buoyancy. This is, in fact, what we've seen for many decades in, in the Bermuda Triangle. As ships go to the bottom fully intact, this is methane fields releasing. But now the fields releasing, for example, in the East Siberian Shelf of the Arctic are massive in size compared to what's been releasing. And I, I don't think they can hide this release much longer. And this hopefully will help expose the geoengineering programs. If enough of this methane releases, it's going to be game over. It's one more reason that the planet has to be allowed to respond on its own. These programs have to be stopped. The power structure is literally in a panic. They thought they could play God with the weather, with all of us as part of this experiment. And now they know that you don't get something for nothing in this equation. I believe they're in absolute panic trying to figure out how to put the genie back in the bottle. But it's, 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 it can't be done. What they can do is stop hampering the planet's ability to respond to these problems. Is the planet warming? Is it cooling? It's too political. This issue is too political. You know, Al Gore is, is, is such an incredible idiot that he is... He has caused people to, to not look at the truth. And, and his hypocrisy, unbelievable hypocrisy, has really muddied the water. You take geoengineering out of the equation, and people wouldn't be scratching their heads about this. Are our oceans on the brink of collapse, as we discussed? Yes, they are. These articles are out there for anybody who bothers to look, because certainly our mainstream media wouldn't cover this. They're too busy telling us when the next episode of American Idol is on. Massive fish die-offs. These are occurring around the globe as we speak. Southern California sea lion pups have died this winter. Many people don't know about this. There's thousands of them dying washing up at the beach. They simply have nothing to eat. Although radiation from Fukushima has been implicated in some of this, much of the rest is just simply a lack of food. And, and that's, it, these events will not be hidden much longer. That's why I have no hesitation discussing them. And people can call me alarmists. They can call me whatever they want. This is happening now. Our quote unquote scientists um, are often very disconnected from reality. They're paid to say what they say. That's true. But in fact, if we have an ice-free Arctic this year, and all indication is we may. If it's not this year, it'll be next year. That's about 100 years ahead of modeling. So yes, the modeling's wrong, but it's far short of how bad it really is. And geoengineering is fueling that fire. And based on all available data, by the way, from uh, an event five million years ago in Earth's history called the Pliocene Epoch, as there's more carbon in the atmosphere, there's normally more rain. The planet responds. The boreal forests thrive. They're not killed with these toxic particulates as the sun's blocked and the rain's blocked. And so we would have more lush conditions right now if they weren't spraying. There's other implications that aren't all positive, but the bottom line is how do you, how do you fight a thousand jets or more around the planet every day dumping these toxic particulates and think you're going to do anything but harm? Geoengineering can and does create very significant short-term cooling events. It absolutely can and does. By the time you divert the jet stream, pump cold air south, artificially chemically ice nucleate, which is like throwing ice cubes into your swamp cooler, that's how you go from 100 degrees to snow in one day, as we saw in Amarillo, Texas. It can create these short-term cooling events, which are very confusing to people. How does it snow in, in, in June? Or they, they see these things on the news with the Weather Channel hypes up. But at the cost of a much worsened long-term warming, that's the price that's paid with geoengineering. 
New concerns about the climate change and the boreal forest. Our forests are dying. Latest report I saw from boreal forest in Alaska, 30% mortality. Anybody who says the trees are not dying, and some of our local biologists will say this, everything's fine, nothing's wrong. Drag them out in the forest and let them look at our trees. Manzanita's even dying. You ever try to kill a manzanita? It's dying everywhere. It's flashing out dead. They cannot take the bioavailable aluminum in the soil. They cannot take the increased UV. They've taken all they can handle and now they're dying. Fir trees are dying everywhere, as I said, and I think this year will be absolutely cataclysmic. When you block the rain, those metals are an incendiary dust. Now let's add dry lightning, because we've had diminished rainfall, we have a more conductive atmosphere, so we have more lightning now with less rain. Cataclysmic for the forest, and in fact, on forest fires, more dead trees, as we see here, What's killing the great forests of the American West? I just described that. Many people don't even know our forests are in sharp decline. They're in very, very sharp decline. And I think this year may be cataclysmic as far as the fires go. Well, why aren't the agencies discussing this? Why isn't EPA screaming their lungs off about this? Because the system's been rigged for them not to. The system's rigged, guess what? They don't have to test for aluminum anymore. The system is rigged not to show these particulates. Who else profits from this? Kim Trails and Monsanto's new aluminum resistant gene. We have the disaster capitalist. Monsanto is now going to save the day, apparently, with their drought-resistant, aluminum-resistant seeds. The soils have been sterilized. Fungus is taking over. It's just like in the human body. When you kill all the good microbes, funguses take over. Same is happening in geoengineering and global drought. The planet is warmer. We should have more rain. The laws of physics state this very clearly. 7% more moisture for every degree of warming. When you acidify the oceans from the methane release when you poison the boreal forests and you burn the boreal forests the earth's oxygen making capacity is greatly diminished and the less oxygen we have the more physical ailments we'll have period more fish die off we see that happening again around the globe oxygen depletion depletion the next great environmental scare as we indicated a lot of science available on this for those who choose to look U.S. wildfires, as we discussed, rapidly on the increase. Last year, Siberia lost 100 million acres of forest, 100 million. The U.S. lost about 11 million. And this year, again, could be absolutely cataclysmic. We are, on, we are in uncharted waters in the Pacific Northwest now, in California. We have record low fuel moistures, record high temperatures, and it, it looks like the scheduled weather, and I use that term specifically, the, the scheduled weather for us is much more of the same. So we could be in for quite the ride this year. Now, what's this doing to species? This is biodiversity plummeting. Species extinction rates are going through the roof. Would media, you think they would talk about this instead of grabbing some drama out of a hat every week to entertain us while the house is literally burning down. Species diversity is plummeting. Species extinction rates, you see the graph going straight up. Based on the latest figures, we're losing some 200 species a day. 200 a day. And people say, well, things have always gone extinct. Yes, they have, but not at that rate. That rate we would cease. They've never seen a, 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 such complacency from people who claim to care, and yet they cannot find the courage in themselves to face this issue above all others, to unite with those who are willing to face this issue. So we, we now, in fact, I believe, based on all available data, face a scenario of a runaway greenhouse effect. If they continue to spray, they continue to shred the ozone, they continue to poison the boreal forest, they continue to alter the wind and featureless sky with very little wind, the rain comes less, it just it drizzles here and drizzled there, they have radically skewed our weather equation. If they continue to do this, we will face what's called a runaway greenhouse effect. One of the players involved, Raytheon, now, this is important too. People need to understand the foxes are running the hen house. Raytheon is up to their eyeballs in weather modification. Raytheon does all the weather modeling for the National Weather Service and the National Oceanic Administration. So those who are making the weather, they form the message. They're the ones telling us what it's going to be like. Do you wonder what partly, what does uh, mostly sunny mean? What does that mean? Mostly sunny now means a sky full of sprayed aerosols. That's their term. They, they've coined lots of new terms because Again, Raytheon does all the modeling for National Weather Service and NOAA. Uh, Lockheed Martin, by the way, does all the modeling for the FAA. Now, let's, let's put the Rothschilds into the equation. I, I realize this sounds very conspiratorial, but in fact, they, are, they, they do own the major weather disseminating agencies, Weather Channel, Weather Underground, Weather Central. So here we have players that are up to their eyeballs behind the scenes in the global geoengineering operations, also controlling the message. That's why Weather Channel now has terms like, the rain is going to change over to snow. 
Well, since when did rain just change over to snow without orographic enhancement, it means moving over mountains, or without colliding with a cold air mass? Why would rain change over to snow at 45 degrees? Because it's being chemically nucleated. We have the patents for this process. We know what's going on. We've tested the snow. The Chinese admitted they were doing it. So they have all these terms now to make people go back to sleep and think it's normal. They call it heavy, wet snow again, this concrete snow that destroys everything. And, you know, so that's why... It's frequently to have these, these events, like I mentioned, Amarillo, Texas, 100 degrees one day, snow the next. People should know this is not natural weather or cyclical patterns. Again, more Rothschilds ownership, Rothschilds and the geoengineering empire. U.S. military explores geoengineering, which we know that they have uh, for many, many years. There's too many journalists now, especially of late, writing books and doing articles saying, describing everything we see, everything. The intention to disperse these aerosols at altitude using aircraft, and, and yet nobody admits to the elephant in the room. This is the king has no clothes scenario, but we think they can't hide it much longer. Systemic denial of geoengineering continues in Venus syndrome. This is a scientific scenario, and we are on this track. Many people think that Venus is 900 degrees on the ground because it's closer to the sun. This is not true. Venus, now based on the latest study, was thought to have oceans, but it experienced a runaway greenhouse effect. It's imperative that we let the planet respond. The planet must be allowed to respond on its own. No one has the right to play God with the weather. And we will all bear the consequences of this. So Venus is as warm as it is. The whole premise of geoengineering is to block the sun, to create a greater albedo for the planet. Albedo means reflectivity. Venus has two and a half times the reflectivity of Earth. It absorbs less sun than Earth. And yet Venus is 900 degrees on the ground because of its greenhouse effect. So again, it's imperative that we Stop geoengineering, stop hampering the planet's ability to try to compensate for damages done. As people take notice of the climate unraveling, and it is unraveling, geoengineering is fueling that fire, I believe this, that if we could bring this to the light of day, if we could make mainstream media cover this, if we could get critical mass of awareness, enough people who participate and make these programs possible would refuse. And I believe enough people, especially from the U.S. military, who we have incredibly dedicated honorable people in the US military that are being told this is something they, they need to do, they must do, uh, it's for the good of the planet. When they realize what this is doing to the planet, their countrymen rely on, their children rely on, I believe those honorable men and women, women will pull back, that they will, they will certainly be on our side. We simply need to bring this to light. If we could bring it to light, it would change our equation radically for the better. That's my goal, that's why I'm here, that's my mission, and I, I appreciate all of your efforts toward this goal. Thank you. Focusing on that? Barely. Dude, it's like, oh my god. Oh my god. Dude, that's unlike anything I've ever seen. There it goes. 